Obite Community Radio. Community Radio. Good evening, good evening, Obbies. Um, contributors, listeners, um, and uh, interested parties all around the globe. Um, this is uh, Yeti, guys, me, myself. I'm presenting um, the Obi Community Radio Show, and you have been listening to the wonderful tune that has been brought to you by Casper, um, some uh, senior Obby nerd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like not that. here we can call him whatever we want yes now. exactly oh, okay. uh, and you can hear already uh, the voices of my uh, of one of our most beloved guests we have tonight Luke who is uh, the Obite Head of Partnerships and he's going to talk with us a bit about um, a fair an event however you want to call it uh, that has yeah. been happening in Athens Uh, and where Obite was present and uh, Tony was presenting, I think uh, I read yes. somewhere. And we also have the great Canadian, uh, the only one. Well, there are some <laughs> more Canadians around the world, but <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> the only one that is proficient in all things crypto and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of other things. He can also play the fiddle. So if, if nothing else, <laughs> yes. he, he, yes, he gets the fiddle. Uh, so this is Bucky Doodle. Um, hello, hello. Welcome, hello everybody. Both of you. Thank you. Uh, Good to be here. Always. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure hosting this show. And it's um, a pleasure having um, uh, super guests um, like you tonight. Um, sadly, there's someone missing that has been quite oh, that has become very regular on the show. Um, and um, when he told me that he was not going to make it, uh, I was a bit I don't know what to say. I was, I was, you know, I was astonished, shocked that this could happen. So tonight we are without Casper, um, but he has some very good reasons not to be on us, uh, on with us tonight in the show, because he went to Disneyland and he's going to hug Goofy, uh, he said. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's wish him a pleasant time and a pleasant uh, stay in Paris. And um He he even cannot listen. So he he wrote in 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 the start when we now started the show that he even cannot listen because French internet is bad. Um, he did oh. he did say this quite. I don't know if all internet in in France is bad. I wouldn't say that uh, because I'm not living far from the border. They might find me. Um, <laughs> so, um, but his internet is sadly uh, not in a quality that he can listen to the show. He's wishing us the best. So um, we are wishing you the best as well, Casper. Have a good time. Um, tonight we are talking about, um, like I said already in the beginning, uh, about a lot of cool stuff. Um, as you might know, um, well, the main event for sure, or the main topic is the Athens event, but you might know that the Autonomous Agent Developer Contest that Obite has held and sponsored um, has gone to an end or has come to an end um, with some amazing entries. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a, a real, you, you could see the, the curve, the, the, the learning curve, the steep learning curve that some of the developers really undertook. Um, and there were some regulars in this contest that uh, really were in every uh, two week session and delivered in every of those uh, um, rounds um some uh, uh contribution that really was worthwhile so um the honorable mentions go out later uh, but this will be on the show as well and uh some other news some other uh things about polo polo even though casper's not here we won't forget his uh, wonderful project and um some other things to go out as well but first of all um there was a i don't know if you you've seen it bucky But there was some uh, email doxing happening uh, from BitMEX. Um, I think it was uh, last week on November 2nd. It may have been already on, also on November 3rd. 
Uh, so they lost some kind of 23,000 emails. Um, and uh, if you yeah. might, if yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was I was going to say I only know, I only know the basics of it, and I I tried to do some research to find out. I I and I I, uh, I don't know much about what happened, but uh, I hate to hear about that. Uh, I mean, I've I've heard before. I've heard so many other stories of of times when that's happened. When a, a disgruntled employee will leave an organization, and uh, they'll just burn as they leave. And and supposedly, I don't know if this is the fact. Maybe somebody here could tell us. But uh, yeah, what this disgruntled employee leaked all these emails and contact information. And yeah, well, that's the best I could come up with as well. So um, I, I tried to to uh, dive a bit into the topic, but obviously that's what happened. Um, that's super uh, dangerous nowadays because that's quite easy. So you have to really be, if you want to fire someone. And you have to be fast, you know. You have to be really yeah. super fast in uh, yeah. in, in cutting his access or her access to to things well, well, because. Well, it, yeah. Well, it, well, really, like uh, here, uh, the organization I work for, uh, it was a lot of employees, and uh, if somebody was to be let go, even at the highest level, executive level, they will not tell you that you've been let go unless security is standing <laughs> by you. Yeah. Here is your and box. Please yeah, pack it. And here's your box. <laughs> Give me your phone. The hand is out for your phone. Pass me your phone, please. And that they, they don't have any opportunity to access anything. And yeah, and they have to walk to their desk and with the security, and security will walk them <laughs> to the door. Yeah, I, and that's at the highest level. That's the executive level, uh, every, because th these things happen. You know, this yeah, that's true. Tomo has just written in the radio audience um, that he heard that the issue was that they accidentally added all the emails to CC. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but it, but it would be super funny. It would be wow. more than just a bit funny. Uh, so uh, <laughs> that would be quite amazing. Um, you know, it, it, it's funny how as if it, something like that could happen. You know, I don't I mean that might be a joke. But uh, but you know when I'm when I'm doing things in here like we just went live okay so when we went live there's a button that I have to push that's that's a big red button and it says go live <laughs> and my when my mouse is over the button and I I'm not even touching my mouse I'm nervous yeah. because what happens if I faint and fall on my mouse and click the button accidentally or maybe after the show has started accidentally fall on the mouse who knows so I keep that button off screen out of the out of harm's way um how easy is it for us to do something silly and and before you know it is a catastrophe like that yeah so that's uh, true yeah, um, for sure technology cuts both ways with that right it makes it so easy to do so many things but uh so easy to mess up in so many other ways so yeah that's that's it um i i have been recently just um you, you just said it bucky I, i'm working in the finance sector let's put it like this so and I've been I've re recently witnessed uh, exactly what you have been just telling, uh, and I didn't even think that was possible because I thought that this was just happening in U.S. movies. You know what I mean? That some people <laughs> are standing by your desk and they are saying, "Hey, here's your box. Please hand me everything that the company gave to you," um, and then they bring you to the door because they even don't believe you that you are going out the door for yourself. I didn't mm -hmm. even know that was possible, but um, it is. And it was, uh, uh, I don't know, it was an astonishing sight to, to see, you know, because you're very, it, it's, it's very, it's very brutal in a way. Yeah, uh, it's, it's but, hard yeah. stuff. Don't let yeah, us and, be bogged down, and, uh, and things it, happen. We also hear, we, you know, in, in, in these uh, Hollywood movies, you know, you, you, you see about uh, people who would set up, um, uh, what would you call it? like a dead man switch? I guess you'd say on a train where when a dead man switches, you have yeah. to keep you have to have your foot on the pedal, or you have to have the lever pulled. And if you happen to unfortunately die while driving a train, you you let go of the switch and then the train stops. Well, people you, you hear stories about these people that have these dead man switches put into their code so that if I'm not at the company at a certain point, this bad thing will happen. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, possible. Totally possible. I, I don't know if that may be urban myths. That may be urban myths, but uh, who knows? There are some strange people in the world. Oh, yeah, I totally agree. 
Um. But you know, another, another thing too, like we we've talked a lot about uh, about security on some of these programs and, and things. And and recently, my uh, recently my wife uh, who has a Fitbit, uh, her Fitbit watch strap broke. So um, I called up. I, I got on tech support with Fitbit, and they knew everything about she's using the machine. She know like they they track obviously it's a tracker so yeah, they obviously. track all the usage. You pay they, you pay money to be tracked, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and then and oddly enough that happened today. And today my daughter her uh, her uh, her um, iCloud credentials got messed up, so she had to reset her password, and it was all kinds of problems with that. And she said, "Why is I'm having so much trouble with this resetting my passwords and all this?" And I said, "Because." This is not helping you. This is helping Apple. Apple is trying to keep track of all these devices you have, so they can get all your uh -huh. your demo, all your metrics, and um, and they need you to reset your password to keep everything straight. Anyway, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, shit. totally, totally agree. But uh, just Tomo, my wife, have, my... You, have you seen what Tom has just written? Uh, in in US, they don't let people go midweek. Uh, they always fire people on Fridays because then the people have a weekend to cool down. They are afraid that fired people might come back for revenge on next day. Um, this might sound funny, but maybe it's not. Um, yeah. So uh, let's not talk about firing people too much, because I don't know. That's we are not the firing people uh, community audio radio thing. You know, <laughs> we, <laughs> no. we have a totally different uh, topic, uh, which is Obite. So let's go to the Athens to the main to the main topic that we anyways wanted to talk about. And therefore, Luke joined us, um, which we're totally generous for. Um, um, and uh, Luke, tell us about the Athens event. What what what, what was it about? What uh, it, it was about decentralization. So I heard it, it was called decentral thing. Decentralized. Ah, decentralized. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, right, straight into the point. Yeah, it was about decentralization, and it was called decentralized. So. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a really, really good event. Um, it was basically organized by uh, the University of Nicosia in Cyprus, um, which is one of the, I guess, the world's leading um, higher educational institutes promoting, um, you know, uh, degrees in, in um, cryptocurrencies. They have a master's uh, in, in cryptocurrencies. Oh, really? And, they do? Yeah, they have a master's program for that. They have a free uh, online um, uh, course that you can also take um, that provides basically an introductory uh, level kind of uh, well class to to crypto and and to DLT uh, and to the world wonderful world of blockchain. Um, and then uh, many of those, those students obviously then go on to to enter. Uh, the program, but it's it's a two year full on master's program. So they've been running it now, I think, since uh, well, I don't want to misspeak, but uh, for a few years now. Uh, and obviously, they have a, a really distinguished faculty there as well. Um, some of the leaders uh, in blockchain, so they're you know very well uh, respected and and well renowned institution um, uh, focusing on on the promotion of the education around blockchain and cryptocurrency. <laughs> This is this is again funny because look, you know what happens. Um, this cryptocurrency world is is so uh, broad in the meanwhile, and it's so many people around it that I ev that I didn't even know that there was some uh, universities already picking up or already picked up on it and uh, installed some uh, um, courses and even uh, studies um, to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think they they started actually uh, taking Bitcoin as payment for tuition. I think huh. I want to say 2014 even, uh, and and then they were um, uh, issuing their diplomas as well on the blockchain, right? So that they would be uh, authenticated and and uh, immutable, uh, and you could tamper with the records. Also, um, they've been doing that for a few years. Um, but oh, it was quite, that's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they were, they were very much pioneers in that. But again, that was already well almost five years ago, uh, and and it was actually the uh, the the CEO uh, of the of the university gave the keynote speech. And one of the things actually he highlighted was that even um, the university, as as one of the kind of uh, early movers in this space, and and one of the institutions promoting this technology and really supporting it, um, that they, you know, haven't really 
kind of lived up to their own standards of, of promoting, um, you know, DLT and, and launching different applications and different projects. Um, they have actually spun off uh, a couple of companies out of their blockchain uh, incubator and accelerator mm. within the university. But, you know, so he kind of used that as, the, as one of the key rallying points for, for the entire conference. Um, so in his opening keynote, which was really a challenge to the community as a whole, um, to, to come on, guys, let's deliver uh, on some of the great promise of blockchain, of DLT, um, that, you know, we've all been talking about for, for many years. But so far, it's it's been a lot of talk, uh, huh. not a lot of delivery. Um, and it's, you know, it's so he made, to... he made kind of a, of a not super positive uh, kind of keynote, but also saying, OK, guys, get, take the challenge and deliver and not only come up with the yeah. other great well, I, would say, I would say it was positive i mean he certainly you know said look we we've we've done a lot but we could have done more and yeah. we should do more and and you know let's stop uh you know fooling around with all of this uh you know the trading and and hodling yeah. <laughs> and, and you know and and the exchanges and speculating i mean okay fine that's all well and good you got or rather you can continue to do that but let's now really focus on the business of getting some you know amazing projects out there into the world uh, and that was really kind of the challenge he made to the community right there were i don't know i guess about a thousand um that you know people at the conference so it was wow. it was a pretty pretty well attended yeah. uh conference so he really kind of challenged the you know some of the the bright and you know, best and brightest minds that were there okay guys you're all here you know you guys <laughs> are you know people who are going to make this change happen let's do it um so yeah, yeah it, was, cool. it was good i think you know he he was honest he said you know yeah well i think everyone was you know has been so excited about the possibilities but a little underwhelmed on the delivery uh and you know he he put himself there along with the rest of us uh so yeah very uh, good know, it was very a good starting point for everyone to kind of yeah because we have been talking a lot about the cap the capabilities most likely the potential and to, to you know what, what kind of amazing things most likely we could do with that technology um but yeah um underwhelmed is it's a nice english word that somehow fits very good <laughs> to the situation uh by the way bucky and me talked about crease um and um we we bucky asked me if crease uh, is somehow a good place for for cryptos and i didn't even know what I could know is that, or what I already, what I said is that it has a lot of old stones, but I didn't know that there was such a brimming community of, of, of uh, cryptocurrency people. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they certainly do have, um, you know, I, I think that, they, well, they're facing uh, the, the challenges that, you know, many countries are where you do have, you know, some really bright minds who are kind of, you know, disrupting the way things are, are done and, and have this great technology. And that's kind of butting up against you know, the, the traditional way things are done. And, and you know, the, one of the sectors that can use it the most, right, is government. But that's one of the, you know, sectors that's always the hardest to actually uh, to, to launch any innovation within that, right? I mean, sure. you know, bureaucracy has been something that's plagued us, you know, well, <laughs> since, since ancient Greece, probably. Yeah, right? <laughs> there you go, yeah. You know, they, yeah they, most likely. They've been doing it for a long, long time, right? And, and, and they haven't been able to, you know, I don't know, conquer it or simplify it, but they certainly say that they see that as as a, as a potential. And, and they had a, actually a panel of, of a number of, you know, different Greek Greek ministers um, and 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 members of the government talking with blockchain people about how you know crypto and 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 DLP can impact you know the Greek economy and what can happen. Um, so they're definitely thinking about it. They're looking forward to it. Um, obviously, there's a lot of challenges, you know, involved yeah. in, in transitioning from legacy technology to something brand new. But uh, in certain sectors as well, you know, it's a, it's a good opportunity because you're having sort of the, the life cycle of older technology finally kind of coming a little bit to its end. So, um, you know, I think in some cases there's an opportunity to use that as the time to make this kind of shift. Um, so as you know for instance in the energy sector you have a lot of you know older say fossil fuel burning plants and and you know electric stations that were built well they're coming to the end of their life cycle and it's a lot easier now to build new you know renewable yeah. plants um and and then when in doing so we're able to then instill this new kind of technology so that we're able to 
you know, use uh, blockchain to create, you know, energy trading marketplaces to better balance the, yeah. the energy grid um, and, and really use innovation to our advantage. That so really, that really yeah. could help. That's, that's something that's very, yeah, that's very close in, 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 in being delivered, I think, from, from a few people. Um, yeah. But you and, and uh, Tony were not only there to listen. So, uh, or, or have you been? I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I tried to do uh, some listening. Obviously, uh, you know, talking sure. is probably my, my strong suit, right? As, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but actually, yeah, Tony was there really to give the, the kind of the key talk um, from, from an old white perspective. Um, so he gave, uh, well, presentation really uh, about old white and about DAG. Uh, and really how um, the technology, the DAG technology behind Obind is really the evolution of, of DLT um, and that it's kind of the, the third step in this evolution. So we started with, you know, centralized systems, um, then we moved to blockchain, but we still have uh, kind of gatekeepers, intermediaries who are in the system. Uh, and those would be, you know, the miners who are, you know, key restricting access to to the network so that you as a you know as a user don't have free uh, unfettered access to post your transactions into the network obviously the miners are there to um you know build the blocks and, and yeah. they decide whose transactions get in and, and how much that's going to cost so while you know with the blockchain enabled uh, decentralized systems to to you know to, to finally start being launched and for us to begin to understand that concept there are still some drawbacks there so you know the, the concept of DAG really is, is the next step forward uh, and provide, you know, solves a lot of the, the sort of fundamental technical issues that, you know, I guess traditional blockchain uh, technology has. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, so. that's, that's kind of funny because um, there is really differences and Tony obviously did a, did a quite thorough speech about it. Um, mm -hmm. But why exactly um, um, is that difference so important? You just you hinted a bit at it already. So, but maybe we can outline this a bit more. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think that that's one of the, you know, the key um, philosophical pillars of, of, you know, decentralization, right? Is that uh, we're, we're able to get rid of these intermediaries mm -hmm. um, and we're able to conduct the, the business that we want to conduct, you know, whether it's posting data, whether it's transferring value, whatever it is, um, that we're able to have access to this network um, in, in a free, unfettered way, uh, so that as users of the network, you know, we don't have to rely on one person or even a, a certain group of people uh, to allow us access to that. So that anybody that builds then the application on that network knows that, you know, whoever's using their application has, you know, the the, the same yeah. uh, ability to access it, post it, and and run, you know, run the applications without any issues uh, as everybody else. And that really creates, you know, a truly kind of equal playing field. Uh, and, and, and creates, you know, a much more kind of egalitarian use of the network, uh, which, you know, I think is really what decentralization is all about, right? It's, it's taking that power away from one person or a group of people um, so that, you know, th there is really no point of failure. Um, and, and it creates a much more secure network as well, right? Because if you have all of the, the mining power concentrated in a couple of mining pools, really you're almost defeating the purpose of having a decentralized network because it's really yep. not so centralized. <laughs> no, it's not. It has then, I don't know, three or four big groups and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, so, uh, there is, so obviously there's a huge difference and it, it really makes sense to think about it. Um, uh, you have been around, so what was the response to that, to that mm. talks uh, that, or to that yeah. speech that Tony made? Well, you know, I, I think um, in, in most of the time when, when we introduce Obite to a lot of, you know, to, to a new audience or a bigger audience, uh, obviously the people that know about us, they, they you know, they're, they're familiar. It's not a big eye opener, but for a lot of people, they're unfamiliar with, with the technology, with, uh, you know, DAG uh, structured, uh, you know, DLT. Um, so it is a bit of an eye opener. Um, and, and the biggest uh, issue is like, okay, great. We get it. That's, that's really cool. Uh, we're, we, yeah, all for a faster network, one that's scalable, one, you know, that has cheaper transaction fees, all of those great benefits. But then, you know, it, it always kind of comes to the, the, the same point, which is, but what about the consensus? If we get rid of the, 
you know, the miners, how do we achieve the consensus? Uh, and so I think that's where, you know, we, we still have a, a bit of a challenge because it is a little bit hard for people to understand. Um, but I think one of the things also Tony kind of introduced within this presentation was, um, you know, as, as old white veterans, you know, that we use, you know, witnesses to, to yeah. order the transactions. But, you know, I think um, that term is a little bit loaded uh, when we use the term witness. Um, it is. Yeah it coined a, a new term for them called order providers, which I think, mm -hmm. you know, really makes it a lot more clear about what they do. Um, because as a witness, you're like, well, wait, what are exactly are they witnessing? Um, yeah, exactly. Witness is loaded. Witness is overloaded because there are many, many, uh, um, yeah, use cases or many things for uh, that witnesses are used for in, in different technologies. So it might be even better coming up with a new name. Yeah. Yeah, so so I think that uh, you know usage of that phrase uh, helped uh, clarify it uh, quite a bit, um, and so it did make it a little bit easier for people to get their head around. Um, nevertheless, we did have uh, a few really in-depth discussions. One in particular with uh, uh, you know some some computer science uh, research uh, uh, scientists who who you know really wanted to dig into. Um, how wait but how how does that how do you know if if you've got one guy in australia posting a transaction and one guy in canada posting a transaction and you know how does the network know which one is first and which order to create and so on and so it got into you know uh quite quite in-depth discussion a lot of sketches on a lot of pieces of paper to try and explain it um <laughs> and 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 i'm uh, you know it, it seemed in the end that uh that everyone kind of got on the same page but uh there was definitely some head scratching going on um but to that end actually one of the the other big big positives um that came out of our uh, our trip to to athens to this conference was that uh you know we'd been talking with with the university of nicosia uh, about you know collaborating and um and we were able to reach an agreement with them whereby actually they are going um well to become a candidate to become an order provider for mm. uh, the network so they were they were just launching um, their uh, their witness node, uh, and on top of that, then they're going to use the node as really an entry point into the Obite ecosystem and, and to really study the network uh, and to be you know run do do some research on the network to run some simulated tests uh, and really you know do some research also on the, on the consensus mechanism so that you know we'll have. Kind of some third party also verification of, of how it works so well that's you know, a that, cool thing isn't it yeah that's when we have these cool. kind of questions about well, wait how's the consensus and is it does it really work you know people um won't just have to take tony's word um although of course there's no more <laughs> honest guy in the business right and his word is his bond and and you know, totally it's, true it's, but if you have some third party some uh, that even specializes in in cryptocurrencies and uh, this technology so yeah. Uh, doing some research and proving things. Pff, well, that's that's a very cool step. Yeah, yeah. So so we're very excited about that. Um, so we're working with them basically to kind of create the roadmap of, of what they're going to start testing. Um, and, and we hope to really get involved with them in, in a long term collaboration, both on the research side and then as well, um, you know, doing some some different events some workshops, hackathons and things like that with, with their community. They also have um, you know, chapters uh, of decentralized uh, kind of spread all over the world. So there are, you know, different, um, you know, communities of, of other crypto enthusiasts. So we are, that we're hoping very to, promising. to reach out to them and, and, you know, spread the good word of DLT in general and, and obviously, you know, explain how Obite fits into the, the picture and, and what we can do well um, and, and encourage people to, you know, to test it out and, and create autonomous agents or create whatever other applications that uh, that they want to uh, create built on our platform. So, so yeah, we're quite excited about that. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it, that it, it sounds totally cool, actually. And uh, some people deep diving into technology and trying to understand um, and trying to, you know, invest their brains to get their head around it. Uh, that's also a cool thing, because then obviously, you know, it's somehow it's somehow stuck. It somehow made an impression. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they, they obviously they 
as a research institute, you know, have, have been analyzing the market, the different uh, technologies that are in the marketplace. They saw Obite, they were very interested in it, how it works, uh, really saw it as, as, you know, something quite innovative uh, and they wanted to dig deeper into it. So, you know, they came to us and said, yeah, hey, we'd like to, to get involved. So we're very excited about that. And yeah, hopefully they can build, um, you know, build a great collaboration. And, and then on the heels of that, um, I can't, you know, get into too much detail, but, uh, you know, we, about the consensus mechanism, we're really, I think, going to be, um, you know, bringing on some more um, new candidates uh, so that we can accelerate that process um, and, and finally get, get uh, you know, uh, the responsibility all, all off of to Tony's shoulders and, and really create the, you know, decentralized uh, system that we're all excited about and looking forward to, to building. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, now, if, if you raise a lot of tension and uh, maybe there are some people now uh, out there that are very uh, interested in, 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 in seeing that presentation, is that possible? Is there a video somewhere? Of, of uh, yeah, there, the video actually, um, I was just talking with them this afternoon, uh, will be ready, like the nice professional version uh, will be uh, available for kind of distribution next week so it'll be on um, the decentralized site but we'll also then have a copy that we'll be able to post throughout our channel so um, look forward for that next week and tony actually is also working on uh, adapting the presentation uh, into a medium article that um, will be uh, published in the very near future as well i, I think that might be already I, i just shared a link to a medium article that i think may be what you're talking about it was published oh. today I shared oh, okay. it in the uh, YouTube text, so if anybody's watching on YouTube, they can grab that link, and uh, it's also in the Discord radio audience channel. Perfect. So, um, because I, I'm now very interested, <laughs> so uh, yeah. if this if this video comes out, I'm I'm for sure giving it a go, um, and uh, to see what Tony really told and and how the reception yeah. was from the yeah. audience. It, yeah, the article is really interesting too. Uh, the article is really uh, thorough. Uh, I've, I've been going down through it myself, and it's uh, it's, it's really good. Uh, especially like you're saying about the uh, the order keepers, uh, mm -hmm. showing how that plays through. So yeah, and yeah, Tarmo just said as well that is published today. That's the one. That's the article okay. I just posted. Yeah, well, see, I said it would be published really soon. Um, <laughs> just you just snap your fingers and it's published. Exactly. <laughs> Boom! No, <yes. laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure if it was actually out already. So there we go. But yes, that's the presentation, and uh, I think it's really, uh, yeah. A, a, a wow! Really very cool. I just I'm just giving you a look because you know the DAG and the DLT. And things like that they're not super easy to explain um because they are kind of using some advanced mechanisms that are you know they are not quite super basic so they are not really totally easy to explain but what i see i'm just scanning through but what i see is is a totally good work at trying to uh make it as basic as possible so uh, mm -hmm. i i really think that people will be able to understand better how a, a DAG, um, a directed acyclic graph is uh, in the end working by watching that. So perfect. Good work, I think. Um, you know, many years ago uh, when I was doing my undergrad degree, uh, it might have been 1993, I, I gave a presentation to a group of educators on what this thing called the Internet was. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I wish I had a copy of that. I wish I had a recording of that. Oh, wow. I'm, sure I, I'm sure I explained it very poorly. But in the future, you know, uh, Tony and yourself are going to look back and say, I remember back in 2019, I was trying to explain, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Keep that link. Keep that link. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, we're totally looking forward to to see the video that's going to be release then next week um watch the medium channels uh if you want to get direct uh directly noticed about it um but what else so there was a lot of uh all by discussions going on you already talked about that but what else was there something that really caught your eye that was something super yeah. special or yeah extraordinary um, well actually um 
one of the things that did kind of catch my eye, um, and it was during kind of uh, what well, was during a round table of uh, of some um, ME members of European Parliament and, and ministers from the Mediterranean countries, and uh, there was a deputy minister there from Malta uh, who's in charge of, I believe it's uh, like the digital economy, um, mm. and it was really. Uh, refreshing his approach uh you know sitting there amongst uh, a number of different politicians who were giving very politician like answers <laughs> to all of the questions uh of the round table and and he just kind of cut through the the bs really and said look you know this is a technology that you know we need to start to implement um it's not going to be perfect it, but we need to get started um, and, you know, it's going to disrupt things and, and we're going to have to understand that and we're going to have to adjust, you know, legislation, things like GDPR, you know, that was um, conceived of, you know, many years ago before, you know, the DLT really became anywhere close to the mainstream. Yeah, it was a bit like, That's you know, true. yeah, Bucky's presentation about the Internet in 93, <laughs> right? People are talking about GDPR like, well, I mean, the concept that there could be a decentralized database. That just didn't exist. Database was something that was owned by one person. It was sat on one server. And hey, if I want to be erased from it, well, you just hit delete and I'm gone. Um, and immutability and, uh, you know, these kind of uh, concepts just didn't exist when they started to write the legislation. And of course, obviously, anything going through the European Parliament is not a speedy process. So, you know, it took. <laughs> no, not uh, really. Uh, <laughs> a long, long time for it to actually get, uh, you know, get published. And by the time it did, well, it was basically out of date the, the day that, you know, the implementation deadline hit. Um, and, and so, you know, he, he kind of challenged the, the other politicians uh, as well. Like, look, you know, we have to respond to these kind of things. We have to move faster. Um, in Malta, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're trying to, uh, you know, be more, um, uh, you know, more pragmatic about in implementing, um, you know, a framework for uh, supporting uh, DLT for, you know, issuing different kinds of tokens for ICOs, for STOs, um, and trying to tie that really into, you know, the legislative framework uh, of the country. Um, and as it is then, you know, an EU country, then that also has certain implications for, you know, the legality of what they're doing across the EU. So, you know, that was that was encouraging um you know i think they've taken a very uh you know proactive approach to the whole thing um and and yeah you know, hopefully we'll see more you know more people um and more ministers and more countries you know take that kind of approach so that would be you know, totally i helpful. know carlo's listening so i just want to make you know a shout out to to estonia there <laughs> um and and this guy also i i can't remember his name off the top of my head unfortunately um but uh, but he was also quite complimentary of, of what they're doing in Estonia and drew some parallels. Um, and so he challenged also some of the other, you know, bigger European countries to kind of get with the program um, and not, you know, leave it up to the just the smaller guys to, to you do just all that. Mentioned it. You just mentioned it. I think um, um, where well, politicians anyways are a few years, maybe even behind what we are really talking about. So. Uh, if somebody like um, um, those Maltesian guy uh, really um, is, is is thinking forward, uh, that would really help because, like you said, GDPR is is ways, uh, way years away from what we really would need as a as a um, as a base. Um, yeah. And um, I think that you're right about uh, thinking that smaller countries might move faster. Um, and the the EU as being a super tanker might not move at all or might move in I don't know 10 years um, but it's a it's a sad thing to see so obviously Estonia and Malta and smaller countries are more adoptable and more flexible to to react than bigger countries yeah no doubt I mean they they definitely have you know the advantage um, that uh, you know, yeah, of course, bigger countries. Um, yeah, sorry, his name is Silvio Shembri, um, is the name of the deputy minister. So just to give him his oh, due cool. credit. Yeah, due credit. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, yeah. Um, but, but it, you know, it, it's good that there's, you know, that they are setting that example. Um, and at least, you know, there, there's some, there's someone kind of to point to, uh, and, and, 
they're they are happy to be kind of the sandbox, the testing bed, um, and, and you know they're they're willing to then export their learnings and and hopefully their successes to you know any other country that's willing to you know take the risk and get on board. I mean, obviously, uh, not being the first one to implement it, hopefully that risk will be you know much less than than the first ones who are pioneering it. But someone's got to be first, so uh, or you know at least they're they're out there doing their best. Yeah, yeah, these politicians, they're they're risk averse. They're they they don't like anything that, that may not give them a second term. You know? Well, absolutely, right? The the ob- yeah. object of a, of a politician is to stay in power. It's not really to do yeah. anything um useful. I, I we <laughs> where I live here, we we're a pretty small or a small place, you know, and uh well, Canada so, is a small place, yeah. So in general Well Canada no Canada no, I because Canada is quite big. But but here in Newfoundland, where where I live, uh, our province of Newfoundland, um, you can we're small enough that you can actually get on the radar of some of these politicians because we're so small. And uh, so I've had some discussions with uh, with people uh, that would of influence here in our province, and uh, boy, they when they hear something like uh, Bitcoin. They shake in their boots. <laughs> well, I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know. Don't I'm not hearing this. I'm not hearing this. Uh, <laughs> so you know, it's it's not surprising to hear some of these uh, co- uh, countries move quite slow. But that being said, uh, I, I it's an inevitability. Right? I mean, this it's 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 going to happen. So do you want to be first? Do you want to be last? What point in the risk curve are you going to be coming in on? You know, so yeah, that's a very good I, question. That's a very good question. I cannot answer that for Germany because obviously yeah. we are quite slow as well. Um, yeah. But and and we are too big to be. I cannot come on the radar of someone here. Um, the topic has though, but um, I think they are more watching it from with a with a I don't know you know giving it an eye, just yeah. seeing what it can do, and then later on when it somehow has evolved or become mature. Then well, they... you mentioned you mentioned about Estonia um, here again here in Newfoundland. Uh, I was part of the team to, to design a um, uh, like an e-residency program uh, for our province, and it was based on the work that was done in Estonia. That was the that was the blueprint, and uh, it got all tossed out from here. <laughs> it was just tossed out. <laughs> Why would we do that? We have paper. We can use paper. We yeah, it's a very computers. good thing. We have a lot of wood, <laughs> and out wow. of wood we can do paper. Yeah. Anyway, what are you um, to do? Yeah. Anyways, uh, so um, as a if you if I would ask you for a result, Luke, for for Obite in general, and and for you personally, how how would you how would you rate that uh, that that Athens event? Uh, well, for us, I think it was really good. I mean, I think the the collaboration that we're able to kind of put in, into place with with the university mm-hmm. uh, in Casilla that was really a big win. Um, so, f- I think for us that was you know a big success. Um, you know, I, I think it's uh, it's important. You know, as as well as the as the keynote speaker sort of pointed out. Um, you know, it's important for the the people who are you know doing the business of of blockchain and of DLT, uh, it's important for them to get together to collaborate to share these ideas and and really to you know work together. I mean that's that's kind of also part of the ethos of the entire technology um, is that you know you can't do it on your own, right? Yeah. So it's decentralized. You need to collaborate. You need to work together. We need to put our heads together to really come up with you know some good ideas and and you know find the the, the use cases the the killer apps you know that's going to kind of launch um you know dlt finally yeah. into the forefront of of society right everyone's like oh yeah that blockchain now uh, that's a bust you know uh, it's yeah. not gonna work <laughs> uh, it's just money laundering crypto evil you know yeah, blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah. Um, we all know that <laughs> yeah and and you know let's hope that we can come up with a real positive use case you know also before the next financial crisis when once again the you know the underlying reason why crypto became you know was was launched in the first place become you know Becomes super obvious. apparent yeah, and, super and, apparent. And, and necessary um so so i think you know from that standpoint um these conferences are useful um you know from our particular standpoint i think it was good to uh, you know, to get out and and to get uh, you know our message out there. I think Tony did a great presentation. I think that in the video, 
uh, you'll see. Um, oh yeah, I'm certainly. looking forward. I'm look, totally looking forward yeah. to it. Um, so you know, it did it did raise our profile. It did you know get more people uh, aware of of Obite and, and what we're trying to do, um, and and then obviously, you know, the ability to to work with the university. I think it's going to be something that's going to help us a lot. Um, yeah. And then you know, really getting their um, their validation on you know, the network, the consensus, et cetera, will, will also be a big boost for us. Um, as as we're working with some, you know, other partners um, on, on different use cases, um, you know, that's that's still a, a question that, you know, big, bigger sort of corporate partners are, are interested in. They want to make sure that, okay, but, you know, if we launch this proof of concept, okay, that's all well and good, but, you know, for this to actually, um, you know, gain any more traction within the organization we really have to have some kind of you know independent verification yes, of sure. that, that this does really what it says it does um, yeah we trust you guys but hey yeah you know, trust we're, is we're good, you know? we have liabilities we have to you know trust is sure. good but having a third party proving That's that it, trust right? is, trust is trust well invested <laughs> so, exactly yeah um, so, is there any 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 new fare, or what is what is the calendar of of Obite saying? Are you going to be somewhere around Europe or America soon? Oops, sorry about that. Um, yeah, I, that's a good question. Actually, um, we're, we're kind of working on on the program for for the rest of the year. Um, I mean, one thing that uh, well, we're also uh, getting involved in are, are some different uh, IoT challenges. So that's going to kind of take mm -hmm. up some of our or is going to some workshops and hackathons with those they're not really you know big super public events but they're a little bit more hands-on to you know again hopefully develop some collaborative use cases with with other uh, organizations both in the dlt space and, and outside of them utilities municipalities and things like that to really put um, technology into into use um, and and really tackle some real world problems um, so, so that's kind of on the calendar, really, for the rest of this year. The, the, you know, the, 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 the events calendar tails off a little bit, you know, come December. Um, so I think that we won't have any other big uh, events this year, but uh, certainly already planning, you know, the, or working on the plan for next year and, and putting the calendar together. So uh, um, if, if, you, if you're coming up with, uh, with the calendar, let us know. Uh, sure. Because uh, if you're somewhere around here, uh, then I might definitely give it a go and, and uh, uh, see if I cannot come around uh, and uh, listen to you or have a beer and listen to you and uh, Tony okay. directly. Um, because uh, I think we should try to publish that. Some people might be really interesting in or interested in, in, in being around and uh, getting first-hand information. Uh, just like uh, they might be doing this over this broadcast that we're doing every two weeks. Um, sure. So thanks a lot, Luke. You can definitely um, keep on air because uh, right now we are going away from our main topic, which already soaked up 47 minutes. Well, minus the introduction that we did. But yeah. uh, now we're going to go um, for the autonomous agent entries. Um, mm. As you all out there might know, uh, Obite has been sponsoring and holding and uh, and promoting and doing a lot of things with this autonomous agent uh, entry, uh, um, um, yeah, contest that they have been uh, starting. Um, I don't know, quite a while ago. And the last round finished um, last week or the week before, even I don't know, last week. Um, and it featured seven extremely cool entries. Um, and if you follow it around a bit. Um, you could even see the level of professionality uh, that went into this uh, um, autonomous agent contest um, because in the first entry round it was quite it was quite basic uh, what was written was quite basic in comparison to what the last round um, uh, saw as entries um, and you to see this steep learning curve that some of the developers um, have been taking uh, in order to really come up with some cool ideas in this last round. I would like to mention who is Terence Lee and Hey Monkey because I think they have been in, mm -hmm. in most of the rounds, if not in all. Uh, and as you, you might know that these have been two week rounds, so you need to really come up with a cool idea, program it quite fast. So with, a, with mm -hmm. the timeline is very tight. So um, 
that's really uh, an enormous effort, um, I think. And uh, they have been really, I think, in every in every round. Um, so honorable mentions uh, go out to those two, um, and to everyone I might have forgotten uh, that has yeah, been also. Yeah, and I, I have to agree with you too. The it seems that the the complexity uh, of of these uh, projects are are just ratcheting up. Aut- autonomous auctioneer was the winner. Of this, I mean, that that's that's pretty cool stuff, uh, you know. And uh, it's. What is it? I love this one. A renting guarantee, an autonomous agent, or R. Yeah, R. Yeah, uh, true. Uh, I read renting. It, right? Yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely went up totally. And if and if you just for one second imagine how this curve might go on even after this yeah. uh, this contest yeah. is over um yeah the, the sky is really or the sky really seems to be the limit so um we have had this this great autonomous auctioneer by frank b um uh if you want to read by the way if you want to read up on all the last seven entries in the last round uh you can do so because there's a very cool medium article uh by casper um out there it was published on november the first um and the article is just like casper on air it's quite lengthy <laughs> <laughs> very do, thorough very thorough Casper yes is, yes yes Casper, and we do love you i'm i'm totally sorry uh, for saying mm-hmm. that but it's thorough just like bucky said um yeah and it really features a lot of details about all the entries that have been made in this last round and you can even see down there i don't know graphics and and really 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 thorough information um about this and uh it i I think it's great Uh, even though as an article if you never have heard about it before you can give it you can give it a go because it's really featuring or it's really packing the things greatly together so that you can have all information at one place and um the third place was uh uh, this arga uh thing uh, renting guarantee autonomous agent um by hey monkey and um the second place, the certificate of deposit by Lion's Heart, and the first place is autonomous auctioneer that we already have talked about that does a lot of things and in an autonomous way because that was really what was what the contest was about. So um, if you want to know details, just go and read mm-hmm. up on it. It's it's really a great article. Yeah, and, and if anybody's listening on YouTube, it's uh, I, po- I posted the link to the article in the YouTube chat and also in the uh, Discord audience channel as well. And you know what happened now is um, Frank B. Um, that really has undertook or has invested a lot of time. And if you if you follow um, or if you just read up on on the article of Casper um, on the the agent that he has written. You can see how much love and dedication and 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 ideas and uh, yeah w- uh, time has gone into that autonomous agent and you know what this frank b did um you might know the polo polo project of casper um and uh, he donated all this truly deserved winning prize that he was awarded with and he donated this to the Polo Polo project that is there, that is a charity project that um, Casper has started in 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 the the the, tr- the pursue of or the try to help uh, the Venezuelan uh, um, people by having some possibility to donate obites for having them really fed well. So um, this is this is the. You know the, the the funny hook at the end. This guy n- did not even invest in ideas and a lot of things and time and everything into it, but then he had the the the, the greatness of thinking about others in this moment of winning, um, and that's that's really why I am so happy to be part of the crypto uh, world because that's happening around here quite a lot. And that's something that you cannot find nowadays a lot around other places. So uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, also, in the name of Casper, uh, I think he would bow down once. I'm doing it for you live on air. 
um, because that really is a great gesture of you and uh, I would really like to thank you personally and um, by the way talking about Polo Polo uh, Casper made some great improvements or well not Casper himself uh, <laughs> to, be, to be totally honest it was not Casper himself um, but the, uh, the people of the University of Copenhagen that are working together with Casper on that um, they might uh, they made some great improvements um, and uh, you can all read this up uh, on medium by in a Casper uh, in an article uh, written by Casper on the 2nd of November and uh, for sure Bucky's has already my maybe? I, I, I want to I want to mention one thing uh, yeah, Lewis Terrence Lee just posted in the um, in the audience chat of um, Discord that uh, he his uh, he said that he's taking uh, the, his uh, his prize uh, that he he's got for his obotic um, uh, uh, contribution work. yeah yes and he said he's going to be putting it into further uh, autonomous agent contests uh, run by the community so love to hear great. that and love to yeah, have you around to Terence Lee because you have been I don't know uh, yeah a breeze it's great to have you here with yeah. us yeah. Yeah, it, that's great stuff. And it's great to hear you doing that. You know, it's really special. That really means a lot. Yeah, no, super job. Um, yeah, totally. Well, as we say, with each round, it go, the, the work gets better and better. So the more things we can do to encourage that, the better. So well done, well done. Yeah, totally. So um, well done. And uh, thanks a lot for, for the donation from Frank B. And also from who is Terence Lee. Um, I would also understand, by the way, this is not necessarily to be done. You know what I mean? If you are really investing time and you're doing a great job, you can take the earnings. It's cool. <laughs> you it don't is. need to feel bad yeah. if you take the earnings. No. Even better if you say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm financially uh, independent and I'm cool and I can spend it. But if you don't, nobody's going to tear your head off. Everybody will clap at you because you did just a great job and you won because you, you earn it, because you invested great time and, and great efforts and great ideas into getting a wonderful product. So, yeah, you know what I mean? I just did not want to let leave this standing as, hey, if you win with Obot, you have to donate it. No, yeah, you no. don't. You can really no, take it because you earned it. But absolutely, if you want to think on the others as well, we are for sure not hindering you. Uh, so uh, we are clapping to you as well but we also would understand if, if you just would take it and just would buy yourself something cool that you always have dreamt of and you never had the money for for instance um, so a, sim um, a synthesizer a nice synthesizer <laughs> that's, what you, that's what everybody needs so everybody needs yeah Bucky's always dreaming of synthesizers oh I'm sorry I, I, I didn't know I was saying that out loud uh, I was uh, practicing for my wife a little later I want a new synthesizer Oh, you can. You, just, who's Terence Lee just said it will be run by an autonomous agent? So yeah, he thinks that. about an autonomous agent contest run. By, that's that's kind of a very cool idea. Who's Terence Kind of sounds so, a bit like Terminator in a way, though. You know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might be close. I don't know, but thanks a lot. That was really a, a great contest that Obad has come up with, and it showed some serious badass. Uh, uh, contributions in the latest in the last round so okay really cool things and um yeah thanks a lot for everybody that took part uh it was really great having you and uh it would be even even better if uh if you stayed and, and made it better it's just like who's currently saying so because there's still a lot a lot of things to do and um the thing is um, and this is maybe the last point that we have been talking about and I'm happy that you're still around Luke um, because um, there are still implementation partners wanted and uh, we're still searching for cool use cases mm -hmm. and uh, things like that so uh, uh, and since you are the head of uh, uh, Obite partnerships so um, what especially are we searching for what especially is Obite searching for well, right now, one of the, the key things, and, and we have some certain discussions going on, but we can definitely use more partners, uh, is to partners who have uh, APIs that they want to monetize because with uh, with autonomous agents and with our 
um, payment channels and streaming payments, we're able to uh, really offer uh, a unique, very uh, easy to use, easy to implement a solution for monetizing API calls on uh, basically on a per call basis. So um, if if people are out there, they've got uh, some APIs that they've developed that uh, they want to monetize and don't want to go through kind of the, the traditional way of, okay, I've got to set up, got to set up a subscription, got to charge it on mm. credit card and fiat, whatever. Um, we have a very elegant and easy to use solution. So uh, if anyone has any, uh, any, any APIs that they've built that they want to monetize or know some people who are running uh, APIs, um, please put them in touch with us and, and we'd love to, you know, give them the toolkit that they need. It's really quite simple. Um, and we think that this can be, uh, uh, you know, a, a product that we can roll out really quickly um, and can go quite, you know, widespread and really solves a, a need in the development developer community. So that, that that's one of the key things that we're looking at right now. So they could, if anybody could, what is out there that exactly f would fit that um, that thing that you have just been describing, uh, they could directly come into contact with you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's the easiest thing. I mean, they can okay. write into Discord or, or, yeah, drop me an email at luke at obite.org. Um, no oh, problem. that's fairly easy. So I think that's, to, that's, yeah, that's yeah. easy to be remembered. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not too complicated. Okay, luke so... obite.org, that's it. Uh, we will write that into uh, Discord and also um, uh, in uh, the YouTube channel that we have uh, been broadcasting this. So uh, if you know somebody that would fit this description that Luke just made, um, get them into touch because uh, that's quite a unique opportunity. Um, and we are always searching for those implementation partners um, in the end to create uh, uh, what, what is well generally known as a win-win situation so um that's what we're here to talk about so if you know something uh, someone like that get him into touch with us um and now it's one minute after 10 this never happens when casper is around really never <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know we are at the end of our show and it was a wonderful show we had great information about Athens, about the autonomous agents, about uh, Polo Polo and, and lay, as, at last about the implementation partners that we are searching for. Um, and, you know, it's two minutes around and after 10 and everything has been said. That's a very cool thing. But it's not, you know, it's uh, I'm ast astonished that it still can happen. So I would like to thank you, Bucky, a lot. Because it always has been a pleasure and it always is a pleasure and it will be always a pleasure to be around uh, you when we are um, live on air. And Luke, it has been a pleasure having you just like Thank last you. time when you have Likewise. been reporting when you have been reporting from Stuttgart Hackathon. Uh, if you want yep. to revisit what Luke has told us about the Stuttgart Hackathon, it's I think a few episodes back, but it's also a great uh, listen. So if you want to see that, uh, go back a few weeks. Thank you, Luke, for being around yeah. and taking the time. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. And, it is uh, a pleasure. Yeah. Back on again soon after we go to our next event or have another nice totally. announcement. Totally. Uh, I'm totally looking forward for you presenting Obite around the world and talking to us about it. Um, and if you, dear audience, want to listen to us again or to view us again and listen to us, uh, the next opportunity is in 14 days, which is the 21st um of november at 8 p.m utc um if you are in central europe like i am and like luke is currently uh you might remember that the time has changed it's not summertime any longer uh at least in some countries uh it's winter time so in uh, central european time that would be now nine o'clock in the evening or 21 o'clock not 22 like it was uh the last time when we were on air two weeks ago um, we are totally looking forward to see you again, listening to us. Um, thanks a lot, Bucky. Thanks a lot, Luke. And this was Thank the Obite Community you. Radio Show. Um, came to you live. I wish you all a pleasant evening, morning, midday, wherever you are. Time zoning is always a pain in the ass. But wherever you are, I wish you a pleasant day, night, um, 
and uh, yeah, have fun. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>